We begin with that shocking story coming in from Kolkata. Shocking images on your TV screen. A little child being brutally beaten up by his private lady teacher inside his house. There you have those visuals on your screens. Really disturbing images coming in. The CCTV inside the bedroom capturing that entire incident. The three-year-old being thrown on the bed, slapped and punched by his teacher who shows no mercy really and goes on beating him up. The little boy unable to protest, unable to resist this onslaught really trying to avoid the punches but his teacher clearly intending to teach him a lesson the little child almost fainted but the heartless teacher goes on after him with a vengeance and continues the merciless thrashing she even kicks the little child the question is is this the way we educate our young children is your child safe anywhere be it in schools or in the confines of your house the woman teacher had been employed three days ago by the family just three days ago and a police complaint has now been filed by the parents the horrific part is that this could happen to your child as well it is every parent's biggest nightmare so there is nobody when they are doing this cruelty so but visuals are saying media is so now they they are proactive but even then they are not taking any action in calcutta i i want to say the chief minister i want to uh, urge her even she she should take action she is a lady she she should be, she should be sensitive about children at least i am very reluctant uh, to file uh, you know cases because they think that you know again there will be a big issue you know the police will inquire will make huge inquiries the child will get will get involved and then you know with the the deteriorating conditions in the country right now you know the police force is under tremendous pressure and otherwise also even the citizens are under pressure you know so whether they will get the app justice or not you know so there are a lot of factors which uh, definitely come into play and especially in a place like bengal you know the people really uh, uh, come to terms with a whole lot of issues our correspondent manogia loiwal now joins me live from kolkata manogia now that of case has finally been uh, filed by the parents of this young child what action is the kolkata police set to take well the first is assurance from the kolkata police that there is no difference with the law as far as the private tutor or a government tutor is concerned it is completely the same the law of the land is same for everyone and with that it also comes to the point that the teacher the after the formal complaint being filed against the teacher um, uh, it is now being taken up and vansh agarwal the child who was hit by the teacher puja singh Pooja Singh is now absconding and we've also been told that it's not only about being absconding but the fact that she has been threatening the parents till yesterday after the classes were over around about for after half an hour of the class that she took yesterday the last class that she took in within 3 days of her classes is extremely saddening that the teachers are now behaving in such a way in the fact that the teachers are always trusted persons of a family and of course they have been confided the responsibility of performing at to best at least for the performance of an improvement of the performance of the child it really comes as a shocking incident manogia do we know if this teacher in question was a repeat offender well that's not sure till now whether she was a repeat offender or not but one thing is for sure that it's for the first time that she was hired for such a small child she has been teaching in the past but uh, to the senior students she hasn't handled students of this level rather 3 and a half or 4 years of age and this child was too small her age for being handled for such kind of teacher because that's what being told that she used to handle a little senior students and it was for the first time that her experience came across when teaching a, a really small child Clearly this is every parent's nightmare Manogia because you have that teacher even locking the room so that the child couldn't reach out to his parents Well absolutely that's called the audacity of the teacher that she kept on that the parents kept on knocking the door and she insisted that the te- the classroom the room be remain remain closed and interestingly we've seen that the, there were CCTV camera cameras in st- installed and thankfully there is an official complaint with the practical experience what happened exactly and not just a complaint coming from the parents that the teacher hit the child and a formal complaint being launched but this time there is enough evidence for all action to be taken and it is expected to be taken because we've confirmed from the Bidhanagar police and the commissioner it that they will be taking action the teacher is absconding just now but they have been deploying police in a search as far as the present situation is concerned what is the account that the parents are giving you on this incident manogya 
parents are in a state of shock. They feel that the child might need some consultation. The, given the fact that at this age he was tortured brutally, at this age he was hit, he was kicked, and the fact that he was even thrown on the bed by the teacher. This is completely vindictive attitude of any human being. You do not expect to tackle a child of three and a half or four years old who's going to nursery in Saint James School, being tackled in this way. But this is completely out of the world. The way it has happened. I expected rather inhuman we could call it the way a child was not only roughed up but then she was being paid to teach the child and the private tutor behaving like this is completely unheard of at least in Bengal also Manoge what do we know of the condition of the child The child, we told, is at home. He had been sobbing a lot and the sobbing also resulted in the fact that he was taken to the nearby parks and he was being entertained by the parents and also the fact that they are spending more and more time with the child given the fact that he is, of course, if not speaking that much because you don't expect such a small child to talk too much or express himself. But instead, he was sobbing a lot and he was, of course, in a state of shock. All right, there seems to be a problem with Manogia's line that we'll try and reconnect with her in a moment from now on your screen. You're seeing two instances that we have been reporting for the last three days. To the left of your screens, you see that shocking and horrific video that was caught on CCTV camera inside the room of that young boy. And this was in Kolkata where a private tutor thrashed that child repeatedly, kicked, pushed, punched. All of that happening to the left of your screens and this comes just two days after we brought you that video, that disturbing visual from Kakinara in Andhra Pradesh where the school manager thrashed three visually impaired children. Action was finally taken against him but this really brings up a very pertinent question about how safe are your children in the confines of your home or even in school. A lot of uh, voices coming in on the channel on this story. Let's listen in. So there is nobody when they are do doing this cruelty. So, but visuals are saying media is so now they they are proactive. But even then, they are not taking any action in Calcutta. I I want to say the chief minister. I want to uh, urge her even she she should take action. She is a lady. She she should be she should be sensitive about children at least. Disturbing visuals on your screens as we speak. Well, finally, the parents have filed a complaint against that brutal teacher. She is absconding as we speak, but action is being initiated against her. The parents say that she did lock the son up inside the bedroom after which she thrashed him. A lot of activists also speaking out on the story. It's every parent's worst nightmare that we're talking about. Well, also activists talking about how there are stringent laws like the POXO law as well as the Juvenile Justice Act, but it's in the implementation of these laws that there is a problem. Clearly, they're not acting as a deterrent as we speak because you've seen two instances of two teachers in the last three days thrashing and brutally beating up students. Activist Ms. Ganguly now joins us on the phone line. Ms. Ganguly, what do you make of these visuals that we're showing on our screens? This is extremely disturbing. We do know that there are stringent laws that are in place, but is the execution of these laws the problem? I actually cannot hear you very clearly, but I think we are discussing corporal punishment. Yes. Yes. And in Kolkata, where these, where tutor has been beating up some children, right? Yes. Go ahead. The problem with our country is at the moment that we do not really have a very categorical law on corporal punishment. There are several guidelines that have been brought up by the National Commission for Protection on Child Rights. And of course there are IPC clauses on it, but corporal punishment by itself is not criminal is not a criminal offence and not recognized as a criminal offence in the IPC. So that is a very big lacuna in the law as it exists. So that needs to be corrected immediately. Even as part of the Right to Education Act, corporal punishment has been recognized, but there are no penal provisions for teachers. But who what have about the POXO as well as the Juvenile Justice Act, Ms. Kanguli? The POXO, the POXO Act is about sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. So if there has been sexual abuse, then POXO comes into place. So are you saying there are a lot of loopholes within the law itself because of which brutal teachers get away? 
sexual abuse and if there has been sexual abuse then it it will absolutely come into place but if there is just corporal punishment which is be physical harm beating you know torture stuff like that then boxo doesn't come into place so miss gangoli are you then saying that there are loopholes within the law because of which brutal acts like these are going without real any action being taken against them it's not just loopholes in law it's also about attitudes yes. it is about attitudes of adults who see do not see children having any agency or individual rights of their own who see them as who use power and, and there is a transaction of power between a teacher and a student absolutely and that power is used to brutalize a student Mm -hmm. and unless we kind of we address this immediately and we make sure that teachers who do brutalize students are prosecuted and prosecuted in time not oh, you know which takes a long long time this will continue so it's it's a, it's a combination of efforts that we need to make we need to make and bring in attitudinal change about what we consider discipline in our country beating a child is considered discipline i think you ask the child they say ek thappar mara tha it's all right parents think it's all right for teachers to beat children because it is part of discipline so would you then the say ms ganguly discipline needs to be understood and seen would you yeah? then say ms ganguly that in most of the cases such instances go unreported because parents believe in this system of yes, teaching yes, children yes, and edu yes, educating yes, them yes absolutely unless it goes out of hand parents don't protest because they do see a, this as part of discipline you see that is the big problem the teacher sees part of discipline the parents see this part of discipline and society sees it as, as part of discipline they all believe it is all about spare the rod and spoil the child so when it goes completely out of hand the brutalization goes to this extent that is when parents wake up like yesterday in delhi uh, a child's uh, hand almost got cut off the finger almost fell off it was only when the finger fell off and the you know it might would would need might have been needing to be it is that parents i went reported so there is also the fear that parents have of teachers you know because out of the parents are illiterate and they do not know how to transact a conversation or take a teacher to task so it's a whole lot of things that we need to address so how do we how do we then miss ganguly according to you redress the situation because you're saying that the parents are to be blamed as much as the teachers in most cases so what's the solution to this what is your view on this we have to undertake a huge amount of awareness generation with in society at large to say that violence is a no no and violence cannot be a mode of discipline is something that we have to bring forward and ch channels like yours can all right i will have to interrupt like you there we'll miss ganguly i believe you have shashi panja child and welfare minister of west bengal with us miss panja how would you take this story forward how would you act against this teacher who in this case is a criminal we are showing visuals from kolkata of a private tutor who has brutally thrashed a 3 year old boy what do we expect from the government of west bengal uh, well i can tell you this much that uh, we are extremely aggrieved about this and of course we uh, uh, totally uh, we have deplored the incident we have deputed the chairperson of our state commission of protection for child rights he is visiting there he has reached the spot with one of the members of sbcr I have also directed my CWC the child welfare committee of North Bengal for Parvinas to go there. But in this case you have the teacher absconding. Miss Panja can you hear me? All right we seem to have lost the line with Shashi Panja there but we're going to try and reconnect with her that's the child and welfare development minister of the state of West Bengal. We'll try and reconnect with the government representative there who is promising action well according to miss panja action has already been initiated in the case but what do what we do know is that the teacher that you see on your screens has been absconding ever since this incident took place the parents have filed a case but we uh, are awaiting word from the government over what other action they have now taken we also have ms ganguly still with us on the line ms ganguly we just heard from the west bengal government on this big story that we are following here on headlines today what can we expect from the government to ensure that such incidents are not repeated in west bengal 
I am glad to see that the West Bengal government has indeed taken immediate action. And unfortunately, the young man or young lady, was it a man? I'm not, I think it was a man, right? Who was... I am, I'm not watching the visuals. Hello? No, no, that's a lady teacher. That's a lady teacher who's thrashing the young child. Yeah, and she, and she is absconding. So she yes. clearly, clearly knows what she did was wrong. Yes. She clearly knows what she did was wrong. You know that it, we, there often enough we have seen that you, uh, it, there, there is such a great brutalization and violence in society and frustrations of adults are being, you know, they use it to beat up children and we have to completely condemn it and say it is no. That we have to ensure that and state clearly governments, NGOs, society at large that violence is a no-no. There it is non-negotiable. All right, Ms. Ganguly, do stay with me on the phone line. I believe we have Jayanti Datta, child activist, also joining us on the phone line. Ms. Datta, what we are seeing on our screens right now is another brutal instance of how a child has been thrashed by a tutor in the confines of his home. The biggest fear now that parents have ever since the incident in Bangalore is how safe are their children, be it in the confines of their home or even in school. Not safe at all, but the, uh, I haven't seen the visuals. But what I have heard, certainly this lady is not normal. She uh, appears to me to be a uh, patient of schizophrenia, mm -hmm. and schizophrenic patients very often land up doing this kind of uh, brutalization of any dependent person who cannot resist, mm -hmm. specifically the child. But here I would like to draw the attention of the viewers to the fact that if somebody is coming to your house, he is, uh, she is brutalizing your child badly the way she has in a barbaric attack she's been going on it is not just physical assault she must have threatened the child so badly that she has assaulted and terrorized him or her at the psyche front what kind of parents are you you didn't even see you didn't even get to know that this kind of thing is happening to your own child in your own house and here we are shouting that schools should take cognizance of this kind of happenings. You see what happened to uh, in Bangalore, then Karnataka. So this is a rampant kind of thing. I just few minutes back, I spoken to somebody and I said the owners has to be given to the, you know, the parents also have to take the owners. No, but do tell us what really drives these teachers to be so brutal with students. Yes, this female whom, you know, who has uh, brutalized so badly and beaten up so badly they are mental patients they have to be given treatment and very often when they are not given the right kind of medications and they are not under control they get driven by their delusional thoughts and they do indulge in this kind of barbaric attack this particular case to me appears to be a mental patient all right, Ms. Datta, appreciate you joining us here on Headlines today. I believe Shiv Arur is also joining us from the newsroom. Shiv, three cases in the last three weeks. We have the Bangalore rape case inside an elite school of Bangalore. We have the case of Kaki Nara. And now we have this case from the city of Kolkata. Clearly, the biggest question and the biggest fear that parents across the country are now facing is how safe are our children? And uh, you know the, uh, the 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 branding that we have on this particular story, Vedika, couldn't be more appropriate. Every parent's worst nightmare, you know. And if our if our viewers are already disturbed by these pictures, I want to take them back to pictures that we've been getting, you know, for the last few months. Not just in this particular case, but also an infamous case from Pune, uh, you know, where a child was left in a woman's care, and she had very similarly, uh, you know, completely bludgeoned that small child who was actually younger uh, than this little boy, who's apparently three and a half years old. The disturbing aspect in all of this, uh, Vedika, is that this is CCTV footage. You know, parents across the country, parents of young children, are, you know, largely you know installing cctv video cameras in their house because of the possibility of something like this actually happening now whether or not this particular woman was aware that she was being filmed is not known what is known is that she sees absolutely nothing in performing the most violent acts on this child she punches him she slaps him she flings him onto the bed as you can see in these uh, you know uncensored pictures she throws him onto the bed she even you know uh, hangs him upside down 
as she violently uh, you know actually assaults him so you've got a situation where this little boy is you know literally pleading for his life and our last uh, you know expert uh, Minakshi Ganguly who, who said this part of it has been caught on camera you can only imagine the kind of psychological and emotional trauma the child must have felt uh, you know in activities that may have happened off camera things may have actually gotten a little worse this child could you know perhaps easily have uh, you know actually uh, you know gotten injured in this entire uh, in this entire attack so you can only imagine the plight of the parents at this point of time because you've got a situation where they've got this small clip they know exactly what must have happened uh, you know to their child on the other hand it's only up to their imaginations to uh, to imagine what else could have happened to that little boy because he's there in that video simply Simply pleading to be left alone. He's been left alone in his home by his parents, uh, you know, uh, 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 in the charge of this particular woman. Perhaps this child had never been able to effectively communicate to his parents what he was actually going yes. through as a result of which, uh, you know, all of this is happening. It's really, really scary, but it's very rare that CCTV cameras have been able to capture, uh, you know, things like this happening. So it's a complete nightmare for parents, Vedika. And imagine how could a three-year-old really go ahead and try and tell his parent about what has been happening within the confines of his room. We still have have Minakshi Ganguly with us on the phone line. Ms. Ganguly, is it because these cases go unreported that we have such a spot in these cases? There's no deterrent really for these teachers that we see on our screens, be it Kakinara or even Kolkata, or like Shiv pointed out in the case of that Pune incident, that they are so brazen and they defy the law. It's a combination of everything, like you said. There is a, you have to understand that today's world, there is a lot of stress and therefore it manifests itself in violence. I, I, would not, uh, I would not always agree with the lady who just said that, you know, if there's schizophrenia, I don't, want, I don't want anyone to get away because they plead mental illness. I want prosecution. And I want prosecution fast. So one of the messages that needs to be gone, that, that we need to get out very clearly is violence. If you perpetrate violence, you will be prosecuted and you will be punished. You know, that's number one. Number two, we have to get parents to become much more careful. We have to un make them, un I mean, modern parents understand that's corporal punishment. And yet, uh, this was not corporal punishment. The case in Pune was absolute pure violence. Mm -hmm. It's, there, is, there was nothing more to this. But in school, sometimes uh, we hear that, you know, the, the child has not done homework and there was beaten. In fact, today I was reading a blog just now in which there are comments about by the, the, on a news item and there are pair, there are people who are saying if a child is punished for not doing homework it's all right now what is the punishment there is a whole understanding of positive disciplining that is uh, it's a it's it's an it's an understanding by itself. It's a yes. philosophy by itself, which needs to be taught to ch teachers. Right. It's not needs to be taught to children. It needs to be taught to parents. And children Absolutely. have to be made given more agency to speak up. And we must start to listen to them. All right, Ms. Ganguly, do stay with me. I believe Shiv has something to share with us. Shiv. Uh, Vedika, you know, we were just talking about, uh, you know, how CCTV videos, uh, you know, have provide, uh, proved very useful for anxious parents yes. across the country. But this particular incident in Kolkata pertaining to this three and a half year old boy, like you rightly pointed out, is a, is, is a scary throwback to that Pune incident, which everyone's going to be instantly reminded of. And I've just pulled out that video because remember, this was that video, Vedika, that initially had scared parents across the country into actually getting CCTV cameras installed in their house households this was that video in which a maid who was entrusted with the care of an infant this is an infant not even a toddler a tiny little baby uh, you know who she flings onto a, a, a chair she beats him she strangles him she flings him onto a bed you know god knows what else she actually did with this little child this was that video i mean it's 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 important to remember uh, you know that this particular footage that happened a few months ago shocked an entire nation. It actually, uh, you know, it actually resulted in parents across the country responding, saying, "We're going to get CCTV cameras installed, yes. uh, you know, in 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 our own home for our little children." You know, perhaps the you know the Kolkata family had also seen footage of this kind, or maybe other footage, and installed a CCTV camera. And and look what happened to them. So, yes. uh, you know, there are there are several questions that are actually going to come up with this sort of violence and what these CCTV cameras actually capture. 
join those households. Irony or tragedy, I don't know what to call it, Shiv, but your house is supposed to be, your home is supposed to be the safest place for your child. And in this case, well, it's really turned on its head with these visuals that we're showing on our screen. Shiv Arur and Ms. Ganguly, thank you so much for joining us.